up guys, my name is Ilyas and this is your 34th, I guess, I hope, tutorial on jQuery. So in this tutorial we're going to continue working on our filter and we already wrote this code and we prepared the HTML structure for it and I hope you guys already have this HTML code on your uh, in, in your document as well. So uh, right now what we actually have, uh, we store into this variable category, the current category which is clicked and our next step is to hide the entire uh, elements, the entire um, images first. And after we hit it, we want uh, the, the elements, the elements with the category uh, which is clicked to appear again. So uh, we know that images which we have are stored in this unordered list with the idea of portfolio. So we can just go ahead and hide all this uh, list elements inside of it. So let's just write a simple selector. Type portfolio uh, space li. So we refer to all this these uh, list elements in this portfolio. And then you can just go ahead and say fade out. So and let's see what this code does before we continue. I click at any category and all of them disappear. And so simultaneously, I want the the elements with the category which is clicked to appear again. And uh, this is going to be a little bit tricky, but if you're familiar with uh, loops from other programming languages, you you'll uh, be able to uh, to make it or to understand it. And if you don't, you can just watch this tutorial over and over again since you <laughs> until you understand that. So we are going to use a very powerful function called each. So this function each should be applied to a group of elements and in, in our case to these elements and then just type each and this function takes as parameter this function which will be executed uh, every time we loop through one element. So and if you want to access the current element uh, you just use this, this keyword, this standard jQuery keyword for the current element. And in order to test, let's uh, output uh, all the elements HTML. Uh, so I'll create a new variable. I'll just call it test, set equal to this dot HTML. And when I run this code, I expect all uh, the uh, list elements HTML code to appear in the console. But before I create a console log um, output and output test every time. Alright, great, and let's just go ahead and run this and see what's going to happen. So I just click at any element right here and I see that jQuery displays me uh, every element's HTML. So from from uh, the first to the eighth. And um, so what it does, it runs this code eight times. And if you don't believe me, you can create a variable. I'll just call it i is that equal to zero. And every time this code runs, you would want to add one to it. And you would also want to uh, display this current i variable's value. And this uh, this i variable will be bigger every time. So let's just go ahead and run it, and you see that in fact this uh, this is a loop, and it ran eight times. So um, this is good so far. And why we did all that? Because we want to um, check every element if it has a class of um, of the current keyword. For example, if I click architecture, I want to look if this if this element has a class of architecture. So let's just go ahead and um, and make a if condition and ask if the current class which is clicked, well this is category, if the category equals to the hold on actually there's a better workaround how to do that. We can ask if this has class of category. And this has class function of jQuery. It what it does, it checks if 
this element, this current element, has this class category. So if it does, it will run this code. If not, if it won't do anything. And it has uh, two values in return, which is true or false. And if it's true, this code will run. So um, if it has class category, we want this element to appear back. So I'll just say fade in. Now let's just go ahead and test it. All right, I I expect now all the elements with the class of nature to stay on the screen. So I click nature, and they do stay on the screen because I set these elements to be uh, to have a class of nature. So this is how it works, and well, of course, it's not. Uh, it's not done because we can only switch between the categories now we can switch between cities, natures and architectures but we also want to uh, have like all category and when we click on it we want uh, the whole portfolio to be uh, to be back again and we also want to add some feedback to the user so the user knows which category is currently active and this is something uh, what we are going to do in the next tutorial. So um, this algorithm is kind of tricky, but I mean, on the other hand, it's very understandable because jQuery provides these powerful tools. And if you would write this code in normal JavaScript, you would have not only uh, how many lines of code do we have? Well, not a lot. We'll have like probably ten times more lines of code for all these animations, for all these loops, and for all these current elements and stuff. So jQuery is a very, very powerful tool for solving such problems. And um, I hope you guys, you like this tutorial, and I'll see you guys in the next one.